to open the case for side proposition, I'd like to call the Prime Minister here, here. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Kate, so uh, I will start today's round. So this house regrets the societal expectation of going to university. Okay, so what do we see the societal expectation is? So we understand that if uh, these are expectations, they create some pressure. Because when everybody believes somebody should happen this way, you cannot do it otherwise if you depend on this idea of following these expectations. So most of the people do want to follow expectations of people, they want to follow somebody's ideas, because they understand that if they don't do so, they will suffer. Somebody will judge them and this will create some pain for them, because when the expectation is going on, people, even who are really close to us, make us understand that you really need to do so, or if we're speaking about something else, you don't need to do so. So what groups of actors I was speaking about in this round. So I will divide them into three categories. So of course we understand that the majority of us needs to follow these expectations, like in general, and of course this motivates us to go to university. All right, so uh, some people really need this motivation, however we'll speak about some people who don't need this motivation and who just see a lot of harm out of it. So we believe that those who uh, understand that this motivation is necessary for them, they would study anyways. So if they understand that education is useful, they would use it even if these expectations didn't exist. However, we understand that some groups of people uh, just do not feel like this education is for them. So who are these groups of people? We understand that some people simply cannot afford it. They cannot afford this university education and so on. Other people just have necessity to work. They have some uh, obligations for the family, they have no money, they have some duties and so on, so they need to work, however they cannot because they have this expectation going on. And moreover, we understand that some people just don't see the need to study. Maybe they are some artists for who education is not so necessary, for who education can create just some borders for their development. So we believe that these groups of actors just will, uh, would feel much happier without this pressure in society. Because now when this pressure exists, when they understand that everybody around is telling them to go and study, and they understand that this is just uh, out of their reach, that they cannot uh, just give it to themselves, they will suffer. Okay, why will they suffer? What do we believe these societal expectations create? We understand that these expectations create some stereotypes, and those who don't follow them are bad. So we understand that some expectations um, may create some sufferings for these people. Okay, why will these people suffer? Because others will just judge them for who they are. So um, they will feel like they are worse than somebody else because somebody studies and they just cannot do this or they don't want to do this. And this means that something is wrong with them. So, uh, and this stereotypes, stereotype works as the rest of them. Like, uh, as those stupid stereotypes that women's faces at home and so on. So this is just the same. We believe that there is no use of these stereotypes and they simply create some pressure on these people because they would live happily without these expectations. They would understand that, okay, so there's nothing wrong that I need to work. There's nothing wrong with me if I don't want to study and I want to follow my own ideas and my own career path. But now they cannot feel this way. And when they go and work, when they go and do what they really need to do, they feel like they are wrong. They feel like they cannot uh, do this to themselves and they will uh, suffer from expectations of people. Because some people will just feel like they are worse, that they don't want to speak with them because they are worse, they don't want to hire them to work because like they didn't go to university and usual people need to go to university. So we understand that group, this group group of actors really suffers a lot. So the second group of actors is um, about those uh, who strive for uniqueness, who want to disregard all of the social standards and so on. So we believe that without these expectations, without these stereotypes, these people could have went to university. So maybe they really wanted to uh, without these expectations, but now they cannot do this because they uh, feel this pressure not to go there because they want to be unique. They just feel like they don't want to be one of those who follow these stupid stereotypes, 
follow these stupid ideas of society. They want to be themselves and they just want to be unique. So these people would go to university, but they can't because of this expectation, because they want to be unique. And this uh, just um, disregards all of their ideology and so on. And one more group of actors that really matters in this round um, is about those actors who want to study a lot and they need to study a lot. So they really want to and need to, but they cannot because of course we understand that um, there are lack of these places in universities. And uh, because of uh, the fact that all people are just motivated to do so, are really under the pressure to do so. People who really want to do so cannot usually achieve that. We understand that some of the places in the universities, some of the students are those who don't want to study and they just uh, don't leave enough space for those who do. Like in some countries there are some budget places, some places where like government pays for education and these uh, places are just uh, covered by those who don't need to study and who don't want to study. So it's just waste of money's, money of the government. However, this money could have uh, been used better, a lot better, and uh, uh, given to those who really want to study. But they may have some problems and they may not uh, get the sports and they may have some trouble about the fact that somebody who really doesn't want to study has taken my place. So if I want to and if I need to, I just cannot because somebody else uh, went to university because of the social pressure. Moreover, we understand that there is uh, this high pressure on government to spend a lot on education and uh, on this university um, budgets and so on. And without these expectations, we understand that, okay, so less people would go and study. So maybe this would have a lot of impact for the government and uh, just those who really need to study and they feel like uh, they uh, need to do this and they want to do this would have taken these places in universities. Thank you. Thank you for your speech. Um, now, leader of the opposition. Okay, I'll start from a few points of rebuttal. First of all, we don't believe in the money limitations for any people in the modern countries. Why is that true? Well, because probably in modern countries, we either have a free education, some kind of scholarships, we have a student loans, which everyone can take, which everyone can go to the university, and we don't believe in a world where these places are kind of limited, we believe that if you a person who wants to go to university from any reasons, either you're motivated by yourself or you're motivated by someone, by your parents or your friends, you anyway can get this funding, you still go can go to university, you still can finish your education. There are two main types of people who don't want to go to university in the, in the government world. The first group of people who just don't want to study, they feel that they just don't need that. They feel that it's something really not useful in their life. And we believe that these people are just generally lazy and we don't, we don't see the reason why shouldn't we discriminate them. Why is that true? Well, because probably a person who doesn't go to university doesn't do much in their life. Well, they probably have low paid job, not really qualified. They don't really benefit the society. And we will feel free to discriminate them in real life, even without this narrative of going to university. Because if you don't do much to the society, if you, if you sit on like pensions from the government, just because you're unemployed or you, or just because you earn to uh, you have too low salary to feed yourself. Well, you're probably lazy and we discriminate you already. Well, and other case, if you are a really useful person in our society, you can be successful without going to university. If you are a volunteer, if you are an artist, if you're a singer or whatever, and you can be successful and incredibly useful to our society even without university. Well, we won't discriminate you in any case because I, as a general person, as an average person, as a parent of this, of, of this person who doesn't go to university, why should I discriminate you if you're writing nice songs, if you paint, if you're a nice painter, if you do some useful job, if you're like a really I know, nice businessman, if you can make a startup which all people in our society can benefit from, why should I discriminate you just because you didn't go to university? Well, this just doesn't make sense. If you make some, if you're beneficial for the society, the society would never discriminate you in any case without in respect of going or not going to university. 
Well, why university universities are useful? I give you three reasons of why is that true. First of all, the university is very useful for your future career. When a person is going, well, when a person is going to university, you probably, you probably, he or she will probably gain a really unique skills, or like practical skills or knowledge skills, and you'll be like you are more likely to be successful in the future because you you you're really professional in some sort of things. You have a, a um, high level of credibility of your knowledge. You can uh, you, you can show the certificate that you passed some courses and you can do some unique stuff which any which, which other person other people can't probably do. Moreover. Probably you have some kind of talent. We believe that all people have some sort of talent in them, and you can develop your talent going to university. This is very useful thing, which will which will lead to the consequence. You will earn more money in the future. You can feed your family. You can feed your children. You can you will buy more better stuff for yourself, better clothes. You can you can buy like a car or something. You will make your life better. Moreover. That you benefit the society, the society, the community you live in better. Why? Well, because probably you can take care about your parents who who fed you when you were young. You probably can, uh, I don't know. You, you probably can invent something if you if you went to the uh, physics department and you invent some kind of math stuff in that university and all that kind of thing things. Well, this is probably applicable to the really talented guys who. Who really want who really want to study who really want to go to university and we encourage them to do so well even if you are not really qualified if you're not really talented if you're just an average person from a different background it is still useful and i give you a second reason well it's just because university is not just about studies it's about some cultures about some values that we give you in the university what kind of values is that well we can notice that in every European, like prominent university, all people are equal. We there's no there's no difference in from what background you came from. Either you're very rich and your father is a millionaire, or you're from a ghetto from old old coast of London and you you grew up, you grew up in absolute poverty and you just gain a scholarship on a random basis. And all people are equal in the university, and it is a very useful thing because we expect. We don't. We can not expect a rich person from from a rich family to not to go to university just because he's already privileged. He's already had lots of money. He's already have like connections in the government or some big businesses. So why should this person go to the university without this narrative, without this motivation in it in a society? The same thing with uh, like with the poor districts in ghetto, which is where, which where the, minor, the majority of people lives in, in, in the countries. Well, why should you go to university if you can go and steal something from the shop? Why should you go there if you can sell drugs in the streets or do some criminal stuff? Or even if you can go to the like small food shop selling the burgers and, and, and living in poverty the rest of your life? Well, the, when you are motivated to go to the university, you if, if you're rich, you learn that the the main the thing the, the thing that you're rich doesn't mean anything to society. You can't discriminate someone just because they are not as rich as you and you they are not as privileged as you. If you're from a poor if you poor background, well, you learn that these rich people are not just they're, they're not golden like them. They're not, they're not really diff, different from you. There's the same person who has probably the same intellectual abilities in you, and you 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 become more brave and you you become. Uh, more capable to competing again uh, w with um, to competing with them. The second value that university gave you is that to achieve something and to be successful in this community, you need to work hard because to get your degree, to get your uh, your certificate, you need to spend like three or four years of hard work. And every mark you get, you need to really work hard, and nobody gonna help you. You can't buy this mark. You can't do anything else. You can steal something. You can't like buy this mark you need to work hard and we appreciate this in our society because without that uh, the, 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 these people are likely to start cheating and mm, behave unfairly in our society well the time is up uh, thank you i'm proud to oppose this motion thank you for your speech and now deputy prime minister
Uh, okay. So to start with, what do we hear from the opposition? From the opposition, we hear that in modern countries uh, there are no money limits and so on. Still, we can talk about third world countries and so on, uh, where there is only high paid education or like, you, may, you need to pay high, uh, or even if you have an opportunity to receive grants and so on, to win the grant and so on, you need to travel to another country and you are required to have a lot of skills and so on, so not everyone can allow it himself. Also, they're talking about lazy people and so on. Uh, yes, that's true that there are, that there are a lot of lazy people, but still we have, uh, we're also talking about people who may have some other priori priorities. For example, they want to start their career or they want to like, I don't know, some other priorities and not uh, to um, enter the university and to have a strain on these people. And moreover, we still have different differentiation in universities, in universities. So we still see lazy people who study not that well and who can uh, easily be kicked off from the university just because they do not do, uh, do everything so well. So the world the opposition describes does not work because we still have lazy people in universities just because of the social um, burden. And still the opposition talks about uh, some benefits, for example, that universities Universities are useful to improve your talent, to, I don't know, to have some other uh, stuff, uh, but also it's a stereotype because uh, you can either, either well uh, pass some c courses or you can just uh, start your own career and to get some useful skills there. You can compare it's about stereotype, uh, like everyone, every woman should uh, like raise children in her life and so on. So it just depends on the person. If, if, if you have some skills and you have wish to do this, you can do this. But if you do not have, you, you should not do this. And I will talk about this later. And also the position tells us that um, university gives you some values uh, but still if you have career if you have this uh, if you have a um, like relations with your colleagues with your family and so on you can still become competitive you can become successful among them so the position did not provide this reason why universities are so unique for this so we do not say that university is a bad place and so on we agree with this but we have people who do not want to study there uh, or who do not have opportunity to study there and it's so it's ex uh, extremely unjust towards them, them so what two values we, uh, for, we stand for in this debate we stand first of all for uh, freedom of choice and secondly for justice what's about freedom of choice we have a free, we have situation when from early childhood like children do not have experience in any profession in any career they haven't had enough time to i don't know to try themselves something in something and they do not have didn't have time to uh, get to know a lot about some careers so we think that these children lack experience in choosing something and that's why uh, if they after school in eight of 19, 18, or something like that, uh, have uh, um, a an, an possible uh, um, this uh, choice. Uh, and if society says them that if you do not enter the university, you're not successful, and so on, so we see that we have no freedom of choice for these people. And so we, we think that uh, we should value individuality and that everyone uh, have uh, is different. So everyone has different skills, different opportunities, different dreams. And that's why you know, we should uh, we should provide these people freedom of choice because only when they fulfill this freedom, uh, no, thank you, uh, they will be satisfied. And also, uh, we think that no, not everyone can correspond to the social demands. As I said, everyone have different has different skills and so on. So, uh, and if you're talking about the social expectations, it just means pressure of these people, and they are um, they uh, get. Okay, they, they do not have the, the freedom at all. So we have two consequences in our world of this freedom of choice. First of all, it was it was what my teammate was talking about that uh, there is satisfaction of just of these pupils who do not want to enter university because of different reasons. And she told this about this a lot. Um, you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have happiness of, of these people people or these pupils because they do not have strain on themselves. Secondly, we have less students who get some profession but not have a wish to find a job and who consequently acquire another job and so on or just uh, this education is not necessary for them and that we also have uh, happiness for these students because they are really engaged in, in what they want. And thirdly, we have some groups of people who do not have enough skills and money and also these, we should not restrain their feelings of, uh, of satisfaction just because they are in such position that they cannot enter the university, so they will also be happy in our case. What's about justice? So, yes. 
uh, this is unjust towards people who do not have money, who do not have a uh, course to study at university, or who do not have skills. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, if uh, we uh, have this social demand in, uh, like for example, social demand in society, it makes a situation that a state should create more budget places or generally finance more into higher education, but we have this allocation of resources and the government cannot just uh, uh, sacrifice as its fears and spend money to uh, education. So that's why the quantity of places remains the same, but the competition is becoming more intensive. So consequently, a lot of people who really want to enter to university, who have dreamt about all his life, all their life and so on, they uh, uh, get, get rid of this opportunity because there are people who are more skillful and so on, but who uh, simply do not want to enter university, but because of the social expectation, they do this. So we make these people uh, extremely uh, unhappy because they get rid of the opportunity to uh, like to get into university just because they do not possess enough, uh, like so much skills, they're not the genius and so on. Uh, this is, first of all, why this is unjust. And secondly, um okay uh we cannot uh allow education in some countries, as, as I already said, or in some uh, countries where there are a lot of poor people and so on. But the stereotype that everyone should get uh, education makes also these people unsuccessful because they have to work all their life to get this education and so on, or just because they suffer uh, because of this realization that they are not, uh, that developed people, they are uh, they're worse than other, uh, their county, counterparts and so on. Uh, the, the rest than people in developed countries and so on. So uh, that's why we believe that we should, we can achieve this freedom of choice and justice in education so we are only in our world, so we regret about this uh, social expectation. Thank you. Hi, yeah, we can hear you. This place uh, where people with uh, intellectual uh, education course to, should go because people who are not on this target will be unhappy and uh, unsuccessful. Uh, there is no profession in the future of the university education and that uh, student and will wreaking unhappiness and uh, success to job to he does not like. Uh, for those who uh, are successful and happy in crafts, recruiting uh, crafts in university will become a personalization because the university will go develop in uh, dexterity and skill drink in time. Uh, due to profession of the university diploma and the society, the online grant to the, from the university and the other professions. When these are ended to each other employment in society in, in such shirts and there in no return, a, a result which people are not very qualified. Thank you. A student will be uh, finally deformed during their education. Uh, more and more expensive as uh, future and uh, empty. Uh, okay, I think of anything else. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your speech. Now I'd like to invite the member of the opposition. Here, uh, so hello everyone. Welcome from the CEO side of the house. Ladies and gentlemen, we, as today's opposition, we strongly believe that university is one of the vital necessities for uh, any individual within the society to get integrated and to survive successfully within the modern and global society of the 21st century. Uh, that is to say that uh, university is, as believed by everyone, is a common or 
uh, an integral a root of right for every citizen of the world. And but before I come to my actual arguments, I want to stress first on the government's disturbances and uh, a lack of logical arguments. So first, they spoke about like freedom of speech, and they spoke about uh, they spoke about freedom of speech and freedom of choice. Uh, freedom of choice, sorry, and that like not everyone is obliged to go to university to pursue a career or to uh, get in order for him to get integrated in the society or in, uh, to have a job in the future. You can just choose uh, to, for example, to be a painter or to do writing or to become an artist or a, an actress or a singer. And then uh, that's the success of your life. But here I come to disagree that, and I want to rem uh, remind everyone that we, uh, as a global society, we're living in first capitalistic and then pragmatic meritocrat uh, meritocracy. And that is to say that there is a global competition between uh, the whole sum of countries in order to become the most modern, the most up-to-date country with uh, the country that is, own, uh, that is owning the most of high technology and developed uh, resources and skills. That, is, uh, that means that, of course, what the government is uh, aiming to is an idealistic view or utopian view of the world that would never exist. And uh, as an example of why university is a necessity, even though it has some luck, is that like IQ tests, for example, they are there, they are made for mainly for the white uh, race in the beginning in US or uh, when the psychological institute started developing IQ or intelligent quotient tests, they are not exact and fair still, like in the beginning, like people coming from Africa wouldn't speak fluent English, yet they are ma uh, like set to the same test in order to put them in the social hierarchy of the uh, uh, society. By social hierarchy, I'm, I mean as well, or I'm reflecting as well to the social hierarchy of the society that we're having from rich people to poor people. Uh, with, uh, that is saying, first thing is, uh, and a point that the open opposition pointed to is that network is not really necessary, but we cannot help it that network is a necessity in human relations or enter relations between them and others. Uh, that like humans get used to others and they develop a certain kind of uh, uh, emotional connection or like pragmatic connection, they give this to get that. They get like, there is no random friendships and stuff that you cannot uh, just split in the modern society between friendship and professional work. It's all interconnected and it's all aiming to uh, put you in a social class uh, where you're stratified or like marginalized from other social classes because you are living this life. Perhaps we're all living in the same country but we are living in different countries at the same time, depending on our social class. And what is making this elements like real, what is making social class exist is the university. Those who are aiming for success in the 21st century will go and opt for uh, to continue uh, in university because that is the tool university. What is the definition of university in the 21st century? It is uh, a tool of professionalism. It is a factory of professional people. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a global competition and a high competition in the modern world. And that is one of the, that is the main and only element why university is becoming a factor of professional people. Because even if you want to be an actor or an actress or a singer, you need to attend the university as a professional in order to uh, sharpen your skills and learn the things as uh, researched in, uh, by scientists for, and the theories that are made before. Uh, and actually, one of the points that both uh, opening government and opening opposition spoke about were just like a minority of geniuses. Like, for example, if you uh, you can, if you are going to open a startup and make money, how many people can, if I may ask, how many people in this society are opening their own uh, startup from starting from zero without their father being rich and stuff, and they reach to be millionaires? It's like less than zero point hundred zeros and one. It's minorities that are not like really a subject of discussion and debate. Uh, what I, uh, uh, these, will, these are the points that my second speaker will be speaking about as well. And uh, what was, yes, another point where uh, also poor people, as we're living in a 
uh, hierarchy, those in the lower uh, grades of the hierarchy, those are like or called so-called blue collars, they're always aiming for their sons, for example, if they cannot achieve the goal to uh, climb higher in the social hierarchy, they would just like invest in their kids or try different ways to make their kids move from blue collars or from the poor part of the society to white collars or professionals, as we call them today. Uh, instead of forming independent critical thinkers, we like we cannot we cannot like form independent thinkers now in this world because it will create a lot of like uh, disturbances, a lot of uh, misunderstandings, a lot of different views that will just harm the social harmony and the social and integral piece of our community. Um, that is it for me for as first speaker. Thank you. Thank you for your speech. And now I'd like to invite the uh, um, government whip. Okay, so first off, I, I want to um, emphasize on, um, you, you, I want to characterize university for us. Uh, for um, University is a place that uh, you spend at least four years of your life. And uh, for, for some countries it's uh, five and for some uh, areas it's five, six and it's um, and it's for uh, intellectual purpose purposes um, purposes uh, you, you want to uh, people who want to develop themselves uh, intellectually go to university so um, that's why it's not for everyone and now I'm gonna um, summarize the uh, the debate and uh, add my um, arguments inside the um, inside my speech. So uh, the government opening uh, talked about um, talked about different types of people. There are people with motivation who want to go to university, and there are the, there are people who cannot afford to go to university, and then um, who have the necessity to work and who cannot go to university and um, so there's a pressure on them and those who do not and there are those who don't want to uh, study um, opening opposition called those people lazy but actually those people are not lazy uh, who who do not want to study in a university doesn't mean that you you cannot um, realize your uh, realize yourself in another field. Um, for example, you can uh, explore the world and go uh, go around the world. And actually, there, there, there's a problem, like economical problem, with this as well. I'll get to that later. Um, and uh, for example, yeah, and or you could um, go and work in a place actually learn while working and there are actually there are also um, other types of schools that you can go to uh, so university actually is not um, um, it's not a primary it's it's different than primary education so um, um, anyway I, I will continue with uh, opening opposition. Um, they they ask the question why should uh, why should I discriminate you if uh, uh, if if you don't want to go to university you you would have a talent in another way so you would. Uh, you would do good things anyway, so why should I discriminate you, they ask. But actually there's a problem with this because people who go to university are, uh, can, um, can prove that they are working for something, but uh, those who want to go um, uh, to arts and music and uh, stuff like that, or that th those, thing, those uh, jobs that don't require a university education, uh, you need to pro prove yourself, and in the minds mindset of people, uh, 
going to university is equal to proving yourself. But uh, in, in doing anything else is not supported by by your family. It's not usually supported by um, neighbors and uh, society. So it uh, creates a stress on this, these people, and then they uh, they end up not. Uh, having the motivation to do the things they could normally do and um, after that uh, they said that you show that you, you you have passed some courses with the uh, with the university education but actually uh, they you just show notes you just show your um, the points you get you we, we all know that not everyone who goes go to university uh, can success can have a great success. Actually, there are uh, a lot of people who um, who double class. I don't know the word for that in English. Anyway, um, so those people lack motivation. So there are actually a lot of people who uh, don't who who don't um, who, how to say, uh, who are not inter interested in intellectual developing development, and instead of that, they they have other interests, and um, anyway, I will just pass that. Uh, I'll come to this. Uh, I'll, co I'll talk about economy, and. Um, Opening, uh, opening government talked about the the fact that wrong people go to university because of this expectation. Actually, uh, what I'm gonna try to uh, explain is that we can actually support the poor to go to university if there was no uh, um, social social pressure on everyone to go to university. Like uh, in there are two types of countries like. There, there are countries that um, government uh, pays for students, and there are countries that families pay for students. For example, America, and um, yeah, and so um, if less people go to university, then that means um, who those who are interested will go to university, and the success rate will um, go up. And um, if less people go to university, we need to um, uh, how to say we need to pay for less people. The government needs to pay for less people, and other people can realize themselves in other fields. And um, for so this this actually is a, a burden for the family if uh, the that person the way to realize themselves is not by going to university. It's a burden for the family. It's a burden for the government. Um, and uh, it's, it doesn't help the country to develop. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your speech. And for the last speech of this round, I'd like to invite the opposition whip. Uh, hello. Uh, three, two, one. So, uh, uh, welcome again from the CO side, because in opposition. As a second speaker, I want to start again by just like mentioning uh, the main points that all the houses, house parts did mention before. So, like the, uh, the government is mentioning that, like, or starting to create gateways or runways from um, university or from integrating university work as with by creating reasons that are like well, these people are not suitable for university because they have other talents or these people are not able to go to university because, uh, well, university is not necessary for you to become a singer or university is not necessary for you if you don't have enough motivation. So first thing first, again, I want to just pin the point on uh, the point that uh, on the main arguments that my first speaker spoke about is that like we are in capitalistic work, we're in a professional work, where there is a high competition globally about people where in order to deserve their place in meritocracy um, that like, although university is not perfect, still it is necessary. 
And then I will continue by mentioning that uh, we, as closing opposition, we strongly believe that if these elements are met in universities, then still university is a critical element in the development of every and each individual. And there is no way out uh, to success in life but to attend university and pass through university. So basically, a government, like as mentioned by the government, they mentioned that while well, the government is starting to lose, if they are, uh, will start losing if they are uh, investing in people who are not motivated to study. But the thing is that university is not one branch. It's not like one way of doing things. Uh, like late, uh, lately, new scientific or psychological researchers like pointed out four quotient of like intelligence, basically. It's like the intellectual quotient, the emotional quotient, the social one and the adversity one. I won't define these as they should be already known by everyone, but I will just stress the point on that like, these are four elements of intelligence. So basically intelligence is not only your capacity on doing mathematics, it's also your capacity on socializing with people and also for that adversity quotient. It's also your capability of dealing with a crisis. How, how as an individual are you successful in managing crisis? Uh, a pure example is now with coronavirus, a lot of people are just saying that, well, coronavirus is creating, uh, I will take your question later, Ada. So uh, university is creating a lot of, uh, sorry, coronavirus is creating a lot of disturbances, psychological imbalances, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if educational system is able to create new or to develop itself into a modern and up-to-date educational system, first thing is that like, we shouldn't base our, uh, the new educational system on the culture or, or identity of others and uh, sorry, based the new educational system on the culture and identity of others. We all know that like today we're living in mostly a Eurocentric world. So the thing is that like as uh, the government mentioned before, which is like I find a weak point uh, that like well there are developed countries that are having like success in education, and there are like third world countries that are kind of failure in uh, uh, giving education. Well, if the non-developed countries follow a new or a restoration of educational system based on the local culture and identity of their uh, own people, then they will be successful also if they mix with the intellectual quotient, emotional and social and adversity quotient. Uh, that is mentioned. Uh, I can take your question now, Ada. Okay, so you're saying that um, universities are a factory of um, professional people but how do you explain all the unsuccessful students in universities so that it means that universities are not made for everyone actually i mean well you cannot blame the failure of some part of students which are a minority or like uh, the lower portion as actually the majority graduate from university either with high success or normal but they still go and pass through the process of university and they still are professionals at the end, whether they have a B or A or C. And uh, as I mentioned before, these elements are the necessity for us as uh, like a modern and a developed uh, country uh, to prove that university is still a necessity to avoid one fraud, uh, fraud, sorry, fraud and minimize the risk of failure. By these two elements, I'm meaning that like, well, if people don't go to university and become it will, uh, for example, to a casting as they are good actors, then the company would be losing time instead of working with professionals and investing more money in uh, sharpening their skills and sharpening their capabilities of becoming world and the best actors winning prizes, winning, winning award actors, they will be just like losing time and money and energy in finding the right actor. Also for singers and uh, art, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, yes, so to sum up, uh, this, the elements that I mentioned are what make us believe as a closing opposition that uh, this motion must fall and that universities are a necessity for every and each citizen of the world, whether they are in developed countries, whether they are in undeveloped countries. If 
they come to make the right choice based on their uh, what, what kind of intelligence they have or what are their strengths and their weaknesses. Thank you, that is for me. So, um, thank you guys. The call is, uh, so yeah, me, me and Harman both agreed that this was a top half debate. So first goes to the opening opposition, second goes to the opening government, third goes to the closing opposition and last goes to the closing government. So um, I'll begin the feedback uh, with a closing guff with you guys. I think um, issues in this debate was one, lack of constructive material. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, um, unfortunately for me, uh, the speech of the member of the government wasn't very clear. Couldn't really understand like the arguments you guys were trying to propose in this debate. And also for the government whip speech, I think, yeah, it was, it would be a bit late to introduce completely new arguments, but still it was really, really difficult to differentiate what, what's your unique contribution what are the arguments you are defending, which haven't already been said by the OG? Um, we heard some new rebuttal from you, from uh, in Ada's speech to, to opening opposition's material, but still uh, it wasn't substantiated enough, we think, uh, yeah, to uh, credit you a higher ra rank in this debate. So my recommendation you know, for the next debate would be, yeah, try to make sure that you have, and you demonstrate that you have a unique material which ha hasn't already been said and probably in this particular debate which what you could have talked about is trying to provide the impact to the arguments uh, defended by the OG. So OG team was saying that for example uh, yes yeah, some people are, are suffering because of it. Uh, probably if you told us like how large is that group or how strong is their suffering? Or if you try to compare their suffering versus the societal benefits that, that the opening opposition was trying to prove, um, maybe that kind of comparison could actually move the debate forward. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, in this debate, it was hard to uh, yeah, identify that material in your speeches. Comparing you guys to the closing opposition, I think this was the closest call in this debate. It was really, really hard to compare you guys because, yeah, uh, both teams share the problems of lack of substantiation of your arguments. For, uh, Merti, in, in the op uh, closing opposition speech, we hear some points you mentioned, some theses, like, uh, for example, uh, at the end of your uh, MO speech, at the end of your first speech, you say that some independent thinkers might actually harm the social stability. You say, you, I mean, you're trying to depict what the world would look like if there would be too many independent thinkers, like without the uh, universities. I think if you have substantiated that point a bit more to show us like what is going to happen and what it means, like the harm to the social stability, maybe that, that could have helped you earn a higher rank in this game. Also, but also at some points it felt like you were trying to further the arguments which have already been said by the first opposition like about the uh, sharpening skills and actually having to attend the school because of uh, high competition. Uh, yeah, I think the skills point was already clear on the first stop. Um, also, sure, uh, uh, who, who's that? Me. Oh, yeah, 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 Harman. Yeah, sure. Go okay. ahead. Basically, what I think, um, the problem why your construct was a bit unclear was, I think, the structure issue. What I think the main point you're trying to make is that this culture of everyone needing to go to a society is very important for poor countries because then they can, because that's very important for the development and for them staying competitive with rich countries and which, and if they can be more competitive with rich countries, they will have, have less, uh, they will face less systemic discrimination. They will live in a less Eurocentric world because they can develop things better on their own and more independently. I think that was the core of your case, am I right? Yes, no, also kind of like mix between uh, following like the op opening opposition and bringing up new arguments that like, you know, well, university is necessary, but it still needs some different basis to start from for every kind of like, uh, yeah. yeah. But basically I think, I think this is rather new because Olo mostly talks about how university is very important for empowering individuals, which is, this is more about developing the country as a whole. 
but I think the pro I think the problem is that it could have been structured a lot better. I think you should have instead of just do it step by step, just go say say this and then this means this, this means that. Whereas I think for CG, I think the main problem is just I think I credit some of the new responses you give to O, but that's mostly to the discrimination point, which I don't think is really all that crucial because it's just rebuttal to what OG has already brought. It's not the main part of their case. I don't think it can really take us OO. So I do agree with it. So I do completely with Max on that in order for you to place higher, you should like, try to think of a more, more unique uh, contribution that only you, CG, brings to the debate. I know that and that should probably come in the member speech. No, no, that should come in a member speech because you're not allowed to do new things in the world. Yep, totally agreed. So moving on to the first half, so why we think this was a top half debate. On the top half, we heard, yeah, uh, uh, points which were uh, explained in a deeper manner. Although the victory goes to the opposition in the first half, uh, because of the fact that uh, what I think, their arguments apply to uh, larger groups. So first Gov, uh, the arguments you were defending, you, you're trying to show us that there is a group which suffers from it. To a certain extent, I can believe that there is a pressure on some people uh, which feel unhappy, but the problem uh, with winning this debate and actually making a plausible case for government is that you need to compare um, basically the benefits. If these guys would actually say that there is a strong benefit of going to the university, why the suffering of this certain group of people is so huge and so important that we need to sacrifice this benefit. You know, so like this kind of comparison was missing from your case. And uh, actually, yeah, that was the reason why when we tried to compare your cases with the opposition, uh, I, I just saw that their impact about networks, about actually the ton of extracurricular activities you're exposed to, and also, uh, yeah, the specialist knowledge, all these things actually apply to so many people. And still, even if some suffer, uh, most are still gaining these benefits and reaping them. And yeah, and also, uh, I, I think the opposition quite successfully mitigated the point about discrimination, which you guys were defending in your speeches. Because, uh, yeah, they told us that actually, I mean, if you're trying to join the industry where that specialist knowledge isn't required, yeah, you, you wouldn't face as much discrimination as you guys are trying to prove us. So yeah, um, my only recommendation to the first uh, op would be actually, yeah, I, I would appreciate if you have brought up like, uh, yeah, some points earlier to give enough opportunity for the first Gulf to engage with those. Because I think still, yeah, we haven't heard the points about networking. We haven't heard the point about like extracurricular activities and the degree of substantiation was yeah, completely different from the first to second speaker. Uh, because at, at the first, at first, I actually thought that some of your arguments uh, um, wouldn't apply to all universities. Like the fact that, I mean, after attending a university, uh, you can actually, I mean, for sure earn, earn a lot of money or you have engendered the values like equality and working hard. I just had some doubts that maybe that wouldn't apply to everyone. But yeah, after a second speech, I think th that went to a new level and I, and I wish that uh, was brought up a bit earlier so that we could have a, a better quality debate overall. But yeah, uh, Harman, do you have anything to add about the first half? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with the point that some of the mechanisms should be in the first speaker, although this, because we're an opening team, we can still scrap it. If it comes to the second speaker, it would have been much better if you were to include the, I think especially the part about how poor families are now more likely to actually prepare their kids for college and how poor kids are actually more likely to expect they can actually make it into college. I think those parts are really important to for us to see how the value of university is important in this debate. Because if university is valuable, but there won't be any more people going to university, then saying that university is valuable is a bit meaningless. So I think those points are really needed to make your case work. And I think it would have been better for the debate as a whole if that first included the first speech. Totally agree with that. I think also why your case beats OG is not just because they affect a larger group of people, but I think it also impacts people's lives much more if they can escape poverty than if they feel a bit unhappy because they feel out of place for not having a degree. And I, again, I still believe that 
your rebuttal to that first point also stands. So yeah, I completely agree with this.